Sadly, we lost the genius composer Ennio Morricone recently, and I've been revisiting some of his music, and what I thought I'd do today is put together a little version of probably his best-known piece of music, which is the opening theme to the Spaghetti Western, The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. And if you listen to the original recording, it's a big orchestral piece, lots of weird and wonderful instrumentation going on. So for my version, I've stripped all of that back and I've tried to make a nice standalone guitar arrangement. So I'm going to begin by having a play through. I'm going to teach you how to play it and uh, I hope you enjoy. Now, I'm sure every one of you knows that piece of music. It's such a well-known piece. It's really deeply embedded in our culture, I think. But there is more to Ennio Morricone than just spaghetti westerns and more to him than just film music, actually. He had an enormous output of music. He had orchestral compositions. He wrote pop songs. Uh, in the 60s, he was involved with this avant-garde free improv collective called Il Grupo. And a, a favourite record of mine is this record called The Feedback, which is this brilliantly bonkers improvisation record on which Morricone, I think he plays flute and trumpet on that one. And if you don't know it, that one's highly recommended. Anyway, let's get onto this piece and I'm going to show you how to play what I just played. Kicking off with this then. And I can't think of a more iconic couple of notes in all of music. I mean, it's right up there with Beethoven's fifth, I think. It's instantly identifiable. And it's based on a coyote howl or a coyote call, whatever it is that coyotes do. And we're just going between an A note and a D note, just A, D, A, D, A. Uh, I've chosen to play them up at the 14th and 15th frets on the G and B strings to start with. Then later on in the piece, I'm playing them elsewhere on the fretboard. But I'm starting off up here. And then we've got an answering melody. And I'm playing this on the G string, all on the one string. Feels good to me to just place it on one string and then we can slide up and down nicely between those notes. Then we've got the coyote thing one more time. And another melody. Uh, this time it's going higher, F, G, C, and a coyote again. And the third time it's just A, D, A, D. And then we've got 
descending melody F, E, D, C. And then finally, sliding down from G to a D. That's the first section. And then what I'm doing is playing the main theme again, but in a slightly different way. And here the idea is to try and mimic some of the different instrumentation you hear on the original recording and get some different timbres and textures going on. So I'm playing the coyote bit now at the seventh fret and an octave lower. And then I've got the melody played in octaves. So I've got octaves on the A and the G strings. So I'm playing an, an F note here at the 8th fret on the A and then 2 frets higher on the G, just moving that around. And it's the same notes. Going up higher the third time. And then the last time. Starting off fairly simply with this, if you've not played these octave shapes before, the one technical thing you might have to watch out for is the muting. It's a good idea to mute any unwanted strings, then you're able to strike all of the strings with the pick and not get any extra string noise. So here my first finger is doing most of the work, so I'm nudging into the low E to keep that muted. I'm just leaning onto the D string as well, so that is muted and I'm just resting on the top two strings as well. So I can play all six strings, but I'm only getting those two F notes there popping out. So that's the next section. This is where on the original recording the guitar proper enters and we've got these quite violent sounding arpeggios coming in. There's great wide intervals going on and you can play this in a few different ways on the guitar. Uh, I've chosen to play most of this stuff down in the open position, that's just where it sits nicely for me, but feel free to experiment where you place some of these notes. And starting with an open A string, and then we've got a series of fifth intervals. We've got D going up to A, then F, upper fifth to C. And then we repeat that. And then the third time we go even higher. Again, all going up in fifths. To E, C up to G. And then up to a high A, and then we've got this fast picked stuff. This is probably the most technically demanding part of this piece, I think. We've got kind of flurries of quite fast notes. I'm picking all of these notes. So this is a part you might need to take slowly to start with, just break it down into small bits and gradually work up the speed, but what we've got is this. So this little motif here, just F, E, D and G, just repeating that. Next we've got really a little descending scale sequence, and I'm not going to take you through every single note here, but I would break it down into smaller chunks, I think. So the first bit is this. And then we've got... Then over onto the third string. Down to the F, and then the last bit. 
coming down to a low C, up to a C sharp, and then we're back to D minor to go round once again with the main theme. So all of that section slowly. I'm going around once again with the main theme and I'm playing it slightly differently this time and I'm trying to bring out some of the harmony. I'm harmonizing this melody largely with triad shapes on the second, third and fourth string. So for the coyote bit I'm playing that here at the 10th fret. So we've got the D minor triad, I've got the open D string which I can use here as well. And then the melody I'm playing on the B string, but underneath that I'm placing some triad shapes. So I've got a D minor triad shape and then a G in the first inversion and then a G in the root position. Now I've chosen those triad shapes because they have the right melody note on top of them. So that determines the inversion. If you're not too hot on some of these triad shapes then uh, you might like to check out a video I did Quite recently I did a triad workout where I take you through all of these different triad shapes and their inversions. They're really super useful things. Now the next phrase goes like this. So this bit is the same. And then we got a D minor. But the harmony is now going to C, so I've got a C triad. And then the next inversion of the C triad. And then the next coyote bit. So the, the chord here is a B flat major, so I'm putting that underneath the, the melody part here. So you have to use this B flat major seven sound. It's in the C C form. So we've got from the A string, we've got frets 13, 12, and then a bar at the tenth fret. And then we've got B flat triad in the root position and then an A minor triad and I'm just adding in the melody there with my little finger. So now you can just hit the open A string there if you want to. And then the final phrase. So coyote bit and then a G triad in the first inversion down to a D minor triad in the first inversion. So if I put all of that together Then we're into the twangy arpeggio section once again and largely I'm playing this the same as I played it before. I'm perhaps just trying to introduce a little bit more of the chords and the harmony. So starting off with this, exactly the same as before, but you can just strum a bit of an A minor chord at the end of that phrase if you like. And then we repeat that. that phrase I'm playing an F chord. Just adding in the root note there with my thumb. And then we're going up higher. And 
playing that as before. It's just on that last note. I'm harmonizing that with an open C major chord. And then the next melody note, I'm harmonizing that with an A7 bar chord. And then the rest of it, I'm playing the same as before. Except when we get to this note here, again, just adding in some harmony there. So for that C there, it's the third of an A flat major chord. So I'm just playing a little inversion of an A flat major chord, and then A7, and then we're back home to finish on the D minor. So let me put all of that together for you. Let me take you through the gear that I'm using today and I'm not sure exactly what sound I'm going for, a kind of spaghetti surf ambient kind of thing I suppose. And the guitar is the Jazzmaster, this is a 65 reissue Jazzmaster I think. And uh, I think this guitar works really well for this style of music. I love the spongy feel of the whammy bar on this one, I'm always kind of grabbing on to that and giving some of these notes a bit of a wiggle. I'm also making use of the pickup selector so for the softer bits I was on the neck pickup and then for those bright kind of cutting parts I switched to the bridge pickup. Amp wise today I went for the Fender Deluxe and I really wanted that bright slightly harsh sound particularly on those loud aggressive quite violent bits of this piece you want that cutting stabbing kind of a sound and that's where the Fender Deluxe seemed to work quite well just cranked up the treble a little bit higher than I normally would on that amp. Using a couple of pedals today as well a bit of overdrive coming from my J Rocket Archer pedal which is one of these Klon Centaur clone type pedals and then I've got a bit of tremolo as well coming from my Surfy Trem pedal and using that pedal in its brown face mode and it's a, an emulation of the tremolo circuitry in the old Fender brown face amps. I'm a big fan of that character of tremolo and this pedal does that sound very well. That's it for this video. If you want music and tab, I've written all of this out and I'm going to be putting that up on my Patreon page. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next time.